It's a new year. The pressures of the first few days of the new year have completely subsided and I told myself I didn't want to commit to a new year's resolution this year because I was already too busy trying to master the one last year, which is consistency. And because consistency is a major part of my creative process and a major challenge as I navigate throughout the years with the ups and downs of just situations in my life and my emotions, I knew it was important to me to make being a creative a full-time gig. I knew it was important for me to use my talents to become a speaker so that I could someday get into acting more seriously because it's such a competitive job. And I knew I needed the leverage and that all happens when I navigate through creating my own platform creatively, no matter how I felt about it. So I had to ask myself, what video can I make that could bring a discussion of healing for most people? But more importantly, what conversation and discussion do I need to have with myself right now? Lately, I've been feeling a disconnect from trying to make it through the holidays. I think there were so many things that I need to let go of from that high energetic period of time. There's the energy of social media where every commercial ordeal is in our face, every influencer is unboxing things I can't afford right now, every matching pajama set, every family expectation and think piece on genocide that I've completely become swallowed by all of the things and other people's feelings and things and in all of that gunk of the superficial world, I knew it was time that I got back to myself when there were times of silence, even sitting in my car, getting home from work, where I could not process anything in my mind that was my own. I was tuning out more often than normal. I was even tuning out my own thoughts at one point. And that's when I knew it was time to get back to me and mine and my authenticity so that I can not only remain consistent, but so that I can better cultivate a community, which is the primary focus of why I chose to be on YouTube, right? If my purpose is to build trust with the people who watch my videos enough to know the journey inwards is more worth having, I have to be able to do that through the times where most would probably fake a smile and mask through a different topic, assuming that everything was just okay. I needed to refocus on me refocus on the intentions that I set months ago so that I can continue to do the things that bring me the most good and that also keep me in my power. To be an example that even when we lose sight of our intentions or of our focus or the things that we want, we always have the power to get back to ourselves. So let's get started. I honestly needed to retract energy from my job and refocus that energy on what is more energetically aligned with the future that I wanted to have. If you're someone at your job that is always going above and beyond or because your job is so easy for you, it's easier for you to do more than what the average employee is doing, I think for us and for people like us, it doesn't take much for us to be helpful because when you've been doing something for so long, like myself, I've been teaching for seven years, I can do things in my sleep that most people use a lot of energy just to do. You don't feel really the remnants of that until there's like been a full month of you coming in clutch for everyone else. And then you start to put yourself in positions where not only are you tired and exhausted, but people at your place of work remind you that they do not deserve that amount of energy. And when that happens, you, one, are disappointed, and two, you just are filled with so much resentment and you're jaded about um, just being a genuinely good person. And I think that's the most important conversation that needs to be had. I used to think, well, if I was a good person, maybe they would give me the acknowledgement and maybe the assets to be able to do this more and easier and with dignity because I was doing a lot, but that was just me looking for a source of validation and gratification from 
work where that's not my place and it's also no one's place to give me a prize every time I sign up to do something that to be fair someone else could have done I didn't need to exert myself I didn't need to overextend myself in situations just because I could and that lack of boundaries that I have for myself it doesn't reward me in the end and that's when there's deeper conversations that we need to have with ourselves why is it when i'm barely at my wits end and i need to pour into myself i still choose to pour on empty i still choose to give my energy away when time has also shown me that this is not as fulfilling as it is you know bottom line no one is required to acknowledge my efforts this type of outside source of admiration that i'm looking for is not something that is ever going to sustain me in the long run either when i'm at work and gratitude is far away from my focus i can tell because it is hard to feel grateful when you are actually suffering but when the suffering is at your own doing there's no one to blame but yourself and that's where i think our journey closer to the divine starts because in ways that we seek gratitude we're also seeking god and when you are in situations where you feel like gratitude is hard to find that's when it's an opportunity to do a little bit more work to get closer to the divine in my opinion last month one of my jobs closed down and the owner chose to tell me less than 72 hours before it's closing for good i realized no one deserved this consistent version of myself like the consistency that i've been able to give other people last year i was allowing these people to use my precious time in exchange for pennies and on top of that in return, they not even give me the respect of a week's notice that I was going to be out of a job. It was definitely another blow or a reminder of how freely I can give my talents and energy away and be so exhausted that I never use any of it for myself to my full potential. And before the holidays, that's where I was. Before the holidays, I had to figure out, okay, how, how was I going to handle not having the same amount of income i had to see this experience as a blessing and a wake-up call i needed this awakening because to be fair my talents were completely being wasted as an employee when i know that i have the mindset of a mogul of an icon of a creative individual thank you for allowing me to express that because it does hurt me you know no matter how easy it is for me to kind of brush it over my shoulders or communicate about it some things do hurt you know and it's hard when you're trying not to take things personal but you're just completely fed up and you feel like life has been kind of turning you every way but loose and it's like some things are just kind of messed up you know i think throughout making this video me journaling and writing down what my experience was and being able to listen to myself and actually have empathy and compassion for myself was really important which is why i advise other people to journal when things get so tight and you feel like so many things have been happening and you really don't have any way to turn to sometimes it's good to just journal it out and Hopefully after this video or maybe tonight or whenever you're watching this, you'll be able to kind of write down and let go all of the things that have kind of been pent up inside of you that you really can't share with anyone. anyone. I hope you see that all of the things in your life that may be thrown at you as a bit of reassurance that you have something worth nurturing and worth bringing into fruition no matter what is happening in your life. I now have to realize now with this open time that i have of not having that job anymore i get to focus on my creative ideas and focus a little bit more on doing youtube in the way that i want to and a little bit more intentional and more creative and i should be 
acknowledging how awesome it is to have God kind of supporting my plans by removing things that were utilizing my time. Isn't it funny how we ask for blessings and transformations and when it's happening, the things that have to fall apart to fall in place scares us into maybe being a little upset at God at like the lack of foundation that is happening in front of your face and it's like god things kind of have to fall apart to fall together and i know so many people have said that but it's really true you think when i um lost that job i was like happy in the first few stages it was like there was a calm acceptance but in reality i was truly scared and it also revealed the lack of trust that i have and what's much bigger than me and it's easy to lose sight of the bigger picture when you're in the middle of it and it took me now realizing that hey I was tripping I was tripping I should be looking forward to the future that I'm going to have with this free time and trust that I will be provided for and not have to overextend myself at the other jobs that I have because I need to focus on this and making this my priority. And I can't do that if I'm pushed into the fear and driving so hard at the job that is already revealed to not be my place anyway. And if you're in a place of transition closer to your dreams and not to your maybe nine to five, I hope that this video gives you a little bit of courage to just like, no, go full head first into what that is. And if there have been things to let you acknowledge and see that this is not the place for you take that as a gift to give you the confidence that you need to go full fledge into what that thing is for you because you wouldn't have the support of this higher power if it wasn't you know i think another thing was me bringing unwanted and unnecessary energy into my relationship I was putting a magnifying glass to my relationship and acknowledging everything that was not perfect, everything that was not what I thought a relationship should feel like. And sometimes when you're walking blind and you're trying to get things that you've never seen or that you've never had an example of, you can talk yourself into sabotage. And I think that's a part of what I was doing. I think it's just time to move in alignment with with what brings me back to peace and love and relationship in service in YouTube in even at my job sometimes like if it doesn't feel fun, I don't want to have it. I don't want to do it anymore. And sometimes we force expectations on things that are not meant to to be to have and when i was younger i used to walk into every relationship as if like okay this one guy could potentially be my husband i want to make sure that i'm present and i want to make sure that i am you know doing things the right way because i wanted to keep this thing naive i was because not every man that comes into my life is going to be my husband and not every man deserves to have those expectations and I shouldn't just completely dish out those expectations on people that are not supposed to like it would be a disservice to your future to put the same expectations on someone that is not it on your future husband like show some respect for your future like I had to realize that no matter how much I tried to mold something into what I needed it to be for me, I had to accept a, its form for what it actually is and was. And sometimes when you are very hard-headed and when you are very adamant on change and you believe in your power as a person, as a woman, as a human to make things right, 
you have to realize that you are just human and some things some some things are not meant to change not with you and that's the acceptance that's real love that's real just gratitude and appreciation for what you already have and the people that you meet and the experiences that you're having and like I said when you are in the midst of it it doesn't feel right I think for a lot of relationships that I've had it was like if you're not going to do this for me then you don't need to be for me like yeah that's outside looking in it's like okay yeah of course a woman is supposed to say that but what about the things that are a part of you that a lot of people are not able to accept either you know and when you see yourself as others see you not as like this great and grandiose thing as much as you are you're great but you're not perfect like i had to accept there's still so many things about myself that are hard to accept period and if I had to be honest and real about the same people that choose to love me and accept me anyway, I had to get real about the work that I need to do to accept others. And um, I know that was a lot. And I know so many people are expecting me to say in this community where so many women are saying things about their standards. And I'm not saying that those standards are not just at all. I'm speaking about it from a human being perspective. What do you feel like is more fulfilling? As someone to come into your life and just completely give you everything that you ask for? Or someone to come into your life and reveal to you who you really are to your soul and realize everything you ask for is not generally everything you need. It's just what your ego is telling you that you need because of what everyone else is saying. Sometimes when we're not aware of what love truly feels like, we start to look at other people's views of love and what other people have and assume that that's what we want. And it's not us. If uh, another woman's form of love is a purse, another woman's form of love could be a walk in a park or a Sunday breakfast. And it doesn't mean that anyone's is more important or more valuable than the other. It's just that each person has their own individual thing that they feel is compassion, love, and consideration. And instead of looking at the outside or materialistic things that exemplify love to you, even if gifts are your love language, if that's a thing, how do you like to be considered? I was watching a video of a woman that expressed, I knew that my lover was outside of the love that he had for me because he stopped preparing my coffee in the morning. It used to be something that he always loved to do and I, it was my love language. I never asked him to do it, but he considered me so much that he wanted to make my mornings easier. I knew that we were at a disconnect when he just stopped considering me anymore. And that, I think that fine line of just acknowledgement and, obs and obs observation is like, that's the real type of world that I exist in as far as like companionship, I guess. And I think when you are in a place where you're focusing on so many other things or there's so many other things at your fingertips to watch of what their love is, um, it's hard for you to appreciate the love that you actually have in your life and it makes other people feel like nothing that they do for you is ever enough and you never want to be that person outside of a relationship that realizes maybe months later like damn I just didn't appreciate what I had and I know that there's a lot of women that think back on a situation where they lost someone really important to them and they knew that they mishandled someone that was just doing the best that they could. So to save someone, because that's just real, to save someone from that type of pain, because that's very hurtful for you to feel, to finally wake up to who you are or who you were in that relationship. Um, I hope what I'm saying is, in a way, 
to reach someone that's just really genuine love. I'm not saying this because I'm I'm on anyone's side. I'm saying it because more women should hear it, more people should hear it, and it's just real. I'm not going to give you the same tips and feedback that other women do. And I think that's what's so refreshing about it, what's so honest and real about it. And, um, yeah. You know what, I think January 1st comes along and people automatically feel a sense of lack. That they aren't doing enough, they aren't working hard enough, leaving so many things behind. And deep down we secretly knew every day of the last year what we should have been doing. And that's what fascinates me, is... I wonder, what is the event that has to happen for you to kick over and just do everything that you said you would on any given day? And for the people that do the intentional work all year, we already know what we're doing. We are intentional every month, not just one month out of the year when everyone else is doing it. And for all of the babes that have intentional lives of radical acceptance and growth, just pat yourself on the back for keeping your eyes on the prize at all times. I know abundance is headed your way this year, and if the last year you did the work to know what exactly you wanted, this is the year that you maintain that and more. And I'm extremely proud of you. Also, I, th- I think refocusing is just trying again. Trying again. Getting up again. Knowing that no matter how many times you've sat down or for how long you've took a pause, you have the power to give it up again. And maybe you sitting down and taking a breath wasn't something to make you look bad or make you feel less than, but to give you that refreshed energy for all of the things that are to come. You know, during the holidays, I'm not going to lie, it was hard for me to just make a video. It was hard for me to write things when I couldn't really focus on myself and now that I'm at a point where I just finally just wrote it all out and you'll see in this video is kind of different than the other ones because it'll feel a little bit more authentic and honest and raw because I'm processing it just as it comes right now some things that I didn't write are in this video and I think that's what it should be about And I don't want anyone to feel shame of the time spent on not just coming back to themselves because that's the real enemy. The shame that you feel of the time spent away and you psych yourself out that you're still not that creative person, not that amazing person that more people should experience and you prolong your distance, you create more distance. And if you're at a point where you're psyching yourself out, I think it stems from a lack of trust in your abilities and I want you to get back to that and I want you to know that no one cares how long you've been away but people do care that you've completely given up on yourself like no one cares how how long you've, you've been away at doing something that you feel like is genuinely right for you but they care and they'll feel more of the disappointment if you decided to just never do it again. You know, when I think about um, people that have a real calling for music, art, da 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 da. Like I love SZA, but I think there was a point where the stress was bringing her to a place where she wanted to retire. And it was like, ah, all of this craziness. And and, you know, maybe there was a creative block. Maybe there was um, a, just a stagnancy of of just a fear maybe of performance and and analytics and numbers and all of those things can cloud you into like just sitting in an abyss of just like do I even really want to do this but I think when you again acknowledge the bigger picture I'm so glad that she made her last album it was so raw so nice so sweet and I'm just thinking what if she just would have stopped before the SOS, you know, people would not be able to resonate so greatly with that sound if she would have just given up. I think this is the year of real empires being built, novels being written, um, businesses being birthed, new faces coming to the forefront, amazing people just entering your orbit and abundance really 
coming into your life all because you decided to try again, you decided to make that video, start that business, write that page in a chapter and then another. And I'm just so excited for what's to come for all of us in this collective because I truly feel like we are going to be the people that make the change. And I just want to say thank you all so much for coming. Thank you so much for listening to this very lengthy um, video and just hearing me ramble and express myself. It means so much to me. If you have any things that you would like to share and if this video resonated with you, please don't forget to like, comment, let me know how you feel. Let me know if there's any situations that were similar to you. And subscribe if you'd like to stick around. Hope to see you all in my next one. And yeah, bye.